Red 2 standing by, all four lit and in the green. Welcome to a brand new project to kick off the year pretty much the same way I usually have. With a Mario Party, which is of course Mario and the gang's solution to solving absolutely everything. Got to deal with an environmental crisis? Mario Party. Want to end world hunger? Mario Party. The economy is collapsing? Mario Party. Only problem is if the economy is collapsing you only get 5 coins for winning a mini game and stars now cost 60. And everybody who's in last just winds up ki just winds up suffering because they've got no coins so screw them. Which is basically capitalism in a nutshell. Anyway, let's get to the various boards. I will be playing through the battle royales and the duels. I'll be trying to use all the characters in even rotation. I've at least completed the game so that I have all the boards we can play on. So let's get partying. And yes, I beat the game with Luigi. Look at that wonderful soulless stare up there in the mountain. So Luigi's stone image is done. So we can choose. So what are we? Okay, he makes a random suggestion. Okay, that, yep. So he'll make a random suggestion for a map each time, which is pretty neat. We've got our lovely toy box aesthetic. There's a very distinct graphical style to this game. So this lift goes to Battle Royales, our standard Mario Party boards. This lift goes to dual maps, which are special one-on-one -on -one games. That mesh grate behind the dual map hides a cannon, which will shoot you to whichever board is currently being played. It's basically your restart. Up there is the mini game room and Peach's Castle is the option, basically the option room. The trees don't really do anything. But we will be starting out with the Battle Royale map. So you do have to play on all the boards in order to get absolutely everything. In the story mode you will work to collect the seven stamps. There's, let's see, there's wit, courage, kindness, with courage, kindness, love, strength, beauty, and mischief. I think Wario usually has wit, which is a bit of a surprise since as far as I'm concerned, Wario probably thinks wit is opposite on the color spectrum to black. Mario generally has courage, though he's fought last of the characters. Peach has fought fourth and she has uh, the love stamp. DK has, DK has strength and Yoshi has kindness. Daisy has the beauty stamp and Waluigi has the mischief stamp. Interestingly, of the stamps held by the six characters who start the game because you unlock Daisy and Waluigi, if you choose Mario, for example, Luigi will have the courage stamp. If you choose DK, Luigi will you'll face Luigi for the strength stamp and you'll beat one of the boards and then beat the character in a dual mode board. Some people believe that this is actually Luigi being good enough to qualify for every single stamp because he can fit in so easily. It's either that or he actually is the canonical superstar and has to prove himself worthy because nobody really thinks mu that much of poor Luigi. Anyway, let's stop rambling and go to our first board. Now you all know how the battle royale works. Let's punch it! So, our assistant is named Tumble, though Dicey does seem like a better name. He's got the classic Rayman limbs going. Tumble, from here on out, I'll be your guide. It's time to set up the game. How many will play? One player and three computer characters. So, I'm going to... First off, because I've been playing her as Mario in Mario Wonder at the time, I'm going to be Daisy. Basically, goodbye sanity. So... Wario, Donkey Kong, and Mario. Okay. All equal. Let's set the AI to hard. They're still capable of doing some really dumb things. Will you use a handicap? No handicap. Pick the board map you want to play. Chilly Waters, the first board. Frosty Snowmen and Perky Penguins. So, we can now choose a custom number of turns. 
I'll go to 25 turns again because that makes it easy. 5 turns per video, 5 videos per board. Just like I did with Mario Party 5, appropriately enough. So, minigame option. We can play all minigames. We can play easy minigames. We can play normal minigames. Okay! Do we want to give bonuses? They are our classic bonus stars. You can switch them off, but we'll keep the bonus stars in. Alright, let's go! So, Chilly Waters, our first board. I will, of course, do the explaining. So... You're all here! Welcome to the legendary Chilly Waters! In this snowy freezing land, you'll battle to become the superstar! Now before we begin, we need to determine the turn order! Three! I'm last! Yahoo! Great, so it's basically reverse order. Okay! Well, we get ten coins. Don't waste them. Good luck and try to become the superstar! Start the game! So I'll need to change some settings. So, Tumble's expression tends to change randomly, so he can have some very unusual expressions. Right, there's the first star. And yeah, Tumble's not wrong, that's a hard one to get. So, let me change a few settings. Control settings. Show... Message speed fast, save after every turn... Now we're pretty good. Okay, let's get rolling. There's the bank. And, yep, we will... Mario gets an item game. Rightio, this was the... This introduced a lot more item games that could appear randomly. Some of them, I'm just terrible with. It takes a long time and a lot of work to actually get some of the mini games just right. You've really got to practice. Now, I think... Interestingly, this game refers to Dory as female, despite the fact Dory in uh, Super Mario 64 is male. This implies that there may be multiple Dorys, and it's just an example of a species. Alright, DK has hit a red space. Wario! And now for me! Now, let's view the board. We can't scroll very quickly. So you can see that there's this fairly nice pathway outside the main board area. Now, some of these spaces, that space covered in red, with sort of the reddish pinkish outline that's about in the middle of the screen, you will land on that for one of the, uh, if you fail, either intentionally or unintentionally, one of the action scenes. So we cruise along around here and we can see this snowman, this Mr. Blizzard, he will throw a snowball and it will roll either to the left or to the right. If you don't dodge the snowball the first time, you'll land up there in that pink space right there. Or if you don't dodge it a second time by jumping over it back down here. There's something similar on the other side of the board. So you can wind up there if you don't dodge the snowball when it rolls to the right. And if you don't dodge it again, you'll wind up here. Now, the key focus of the board is the center and the ice. So, if two players stop on the ice, it will crack and you'll run to this space here. Every time. You can see that there are four exits. One, two, well, three exits. There are four pa five paths leading in, but only three exits. If you try to exit this area, it is entirely possible for you to slip and fall and end your turn on either one of those three exit spaces. It's stupid. This board, these boards tend to have a lot more gimmicks in them, so you really have to either have some strategic play or some really good luck. Let's roll, Daisy. Ten. Not bad, where do I want to go? Well, I want to go for the item game, of course. I rarely get... 
Oh, Toad is actually asking me a question. Sometimes Toad will ask you questions. Sometimes Baby Bowser will ask you questions. Uh, what? If you choose the highest option, there is a chance that Toad will call you greedy and you won't get anything. He is telling you to answer honestly, but he gets upset when you answer him honestly. Baby Bowser will usually give you different things. You might get some good items out of him, you might not, an average item. Rare item? I got the Koopa card straight off the bat? So the Koopa card lets you withdraw the money from the bank when you pass it. Keep in mind that you can choose to use the Koopa card. If you land on the bank space, you can accidentally use your Koopa card and then not get anything from landing on the bank. So be very careful when using the Koopa card. Now I admit I've gone the wrong way for the star, but I have a plan. Okay, Etch and Catch, our first mini game. Toad has been turned into a stamp. Draw a circle around him with your magic crayon to return him to normal. We just have to move around. Work together to encircle Toad or you won't be able to save him. Well, let's give it our best. The AI is probably going to be a bit smarter and Toad does move. So, how smart is DK going to be? Ooh. Well, we got one. It can be very fiddly. Somehow that counted. Somehow that counted. Mind you, DK is probably only really good at drawing with crayons. Somehow that counted again. So yeah, DK is definitely back from his community service that he had in Mario Party 5. We've gone back in time. But DK has finished his community service, his sentence is done, and he's free to party with us once again. Just keep him away from the banana wine and everything should be alright. There we are, what's Mario going to... No, Mario's not going to buy anything. Alright, so the happening spaces. The happening spaces will usually trigger the snowball being thrown. So that will trigger the action sequence. At certain points in the board, the action sequence will act, the action time will activate, and you'll have to press the A button with good timing to dodge something, to, do, to either dodge or get little shortcuts. You'll wind up getting sent to certain spaces if you fail it. Oh, Warrior's got an item game. Winner's Wheel, I believe this reappears in Superstars. You might recognise a few item games from Superstars because the item games in 2 and 3 tended to pop up a fair bit in that. I don't think they had item mini games in, uh, in others. Uh, what's he going to get? Well, he stopped it on the magic lamp, which means he should be getting that. Yep, so it'll do a full rotation. Good timing on Wario's part. So, yes, very egotistical characters. Everybody says I'm the best when they succeed at something. Presumably DK and uh, Yoshi say the same thing, just in their own dialect. All right, three. What do I want? Daisy's, call it chosen item, is the cellular shopper. So, I want the mushroom. All right, there are hidden blocks, and you can get skeleton keys in hidden blocks too. So you can get skeleton keys, 20 coins, or stars. Jump to avoid the waves caused by the player in the boat. Ground pound, we just have to jump. The size of the wave depends on the height of your ground pound. Just jumping will also cause a wave. Let's get into it. There's a fair bit of knockback, but you also get some very generous mercy invincibility. So wait, those other two spuds are dead already? Yep, 
Yeah, if you're if you're smart about this, it's so easy to win. I think it was actually made a bit easier for the one person in later appearances, because I'm not sure what happened to Pinky and Perky over there. Yeah, Tweedledum and Tweedledumma died somewhere along the way as I wasn't paying attention. Alrighty, so Mario can loop around that way and try to get to the start. Okay, so he's... He's decided to land on a red space! DK has a shot at the star now, but you see... He's actually made it! You see how he was running and looking like he might slip? Oh, okay. Well, I had to uh, better get a move on then. Right, so... DK gets an item. Yep, here's Baby Bowser. Are you a picky eater? Yes, he gets two items. A warp block and a plunder chest. Oh, no. So, who's he going to steal from? Wait, what? Wario! Do you... Th I mean, this isn't exactly the stupidest move I've seen. I mean, he has to have done that out of spite, though. Because that that's... If I'm going to be brutally honest, that's actually a fairly in... Well, actually, no. It... He's wasted the magic lamp out of spite. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. I'd need a legendary roll to get to the bank. But I don't want to use it just in case DK steals from me. Because I'm the only other person with an item right now. Yes, if I go up, I get another item space. So, the plunder chest has been changed. You can now choose your target, but it steals a random item. And I hate Hey Batta Batta. I have got an item out of this once. Every time I've played, out of all the times I've played it. I don't know how, but almost every time I have spectacularly managed to pop fly. And, well, at least I got a mushroom that time. So I've now got a leg up on going for the star. But yeah, like, I can kind of see that Wario's move was... It's smart from one point of view, it's just the old, it's just spiteful. It's not entirely stupid, but it's like, I'm not going to be in a position to use it. You're going to steal it from me next turn. You don't get to. So, like, okay, reel in the three who have become fish if all get caught. So. This one's kind of tricky. Oh, dear. The controls aren't... DK, get away from me. The controls are really, really shonky because you can't actually turn that well. This one's ridiculously easy for the one player because you sort of have to factor in that it's it's like a weird, really weird sense of tank controls. Okay, so I'm still in with a chance on the... Uh, so what's Mario going to do? Is he going to buy an item? So he's bought a mushroom. Okay. Now what does DK do? So that's fair enough. He's probably going to steal from me. Good. So I keep my Cooper card and I can now gun for the bank. Alright, so DK has activated Mr. Blizzard. So I might get sent back if I don't jump in time. 
So, see how DK has to jump there? Now it's my turn. Ready? Oh, the... Okay, so it's telling me to press the A button and it kind of doesn't. The timing is really, really fiddly. And now it happens again. I think you just have to do it... I'm, I'm not sure how the timing works because I thought I pressed it. I, you have to be very specific because when the prompt pops up on screen, that's not quite... Okay, DK's missed Boo, that's okay. You actually have to press it at a sort of more specific moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven. Alright, so I do want to use my mushroom. Great! Well, that's not horrible. All right, that's not. Oh, that could be worse. I'm. Oh, this one. This one is so biased to the. Oh no! Wait, hang on. It's that's not the one I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of the searchlight one. Three. If the single player guesses your hiding place, you lose. Move and push switch. We have. This is essentially just random chance. So, they have to press an input on the control stick to find a hiding spot. And it's completely random, so... Ooh. So, I can... I might be able to guess something. Let's try the mushroom. Damn it! Because they can still move even after the curtain's closing. Yeah, that that second one stitched me up. If I, I probably shouldn't have gone for the mushroom because I was thinking I saw Mario move there last, so that was worth a guess. A few mini games like that do actually pop up throughout the series. You get, you'll get games like uh, the the cannon one in Mario Party Four, hide and go boom in Mario Party Four. I wouldn't have minded a roll like that. So this it's going to be a chore getting to this star. Yeah, the AI doesn't seem to be able to consistently get the timing right, too. Unless Mario's deliberately choosing to miss that, so he's got to... Go yeah, that was a good strategy by Mario. Deliberately miss it to have a chance at getting the star. But now I have to work out where to go, because I'm trying to get to the bank. I just got a... I got a really bad... Damn it! So my so pretty much everything I've planned out has been entirely useless. This is there's Bowser. I mean. No, it's not Bowser. I'm just short of Bowser. Well, I could go for that Bowser, but I might land here. Okay. Time to wrap up part one. Still have to get a few... Oh, and it's this one. It's like, oh, cool, we got a new minigame. Oh, great, it's this minigame. Awful Tower which appears to have psychic hammer bros that will perfectly time their shots just so they will knock you off the blocks. So you move and jump, the hammer bro use good timing to pass by them. The hammer bros, just as is typical fare for Mario games, are annoyingly accurate. 
please jump. You see what I mean? Like, they can predict what you're going to do. And that one is so hard to make. Because, like, you see that I'm trying to jump and I just fall like a... Ah, uh, Wario wins. You can see you're trying to jump, but your momentum suddenly stops and you drop like a rock. It's really, really frustrating. And the AI is usually pretty good at that. Dumped into last. 